Welcome back to DeFi Tactics. Remember, this is not financial advice. Do not make any financial decisions based on my word alone. Always do your own research. With that said, today we're gonna to discuss the FTSO, the Oracle system for Flare and Songbird, and the factors that we need to take into consideration when selecting a signal provider. Let's jump to it. So the FTSO is the Flare Time Series Oracle. Well, what is an Oracle? An Oracle is a way to get off-chain data on-chain. You see, blockchains don't have access to information that is not on-chain, aka off-chain data. Not everything that a smart contract needs to execute lives on the chain it's built on. Think of all the data that lives on the internet, not on-chain. When it comes to DeFi, this typically means price data that is used by financial smart contracts to control key aspects of lending protocols, insurance contracts, stable coins, and derivatives. So what does this mean? Essentially, an oracle is a means to provide data such as prices from off-chain sources to put it on the blockchain. A smart contract lives on the blockchain, but say for instance, Flare Loans needs off-chain data such as price feeds to make sure that the collateral is matching the debt position. Another example is on say Flare X. We need to have an idea of what the price is for the different F assets and the Spark token in order to get a good exchange rate. An Oracle is the thing that allows you to get data into your smart contract. It either brings it on chain for you to read from or pushes the data into your smart contract. Typically, this is a third party service or something that you do yourself manually. Both of these are centralized. The FTSO, or the Flare Time Series Oracle, is an ingenious way in order to make Oracle services decentralized. Let's say, for example, we were relying on a single third party in order to provide price feeds to Flare. This single entity could be a malicious actor or provide incorrect price data, which may benefit them, but not the rest of the community or the participants. So in the example of Flare X, Let's say a centralized Oracle wanted to make five cents per XRP, just like that. They could in theory provide incorrect data to the FlareX platform. Meaning, for example, let's say the actual price of XRP was trading at $1.05. This third party could run in, say that XRP was a dollar, buy all the XRP up, and then turn around and sell it on the open market for $1.05. Thus, leaving the participants who sold at that rates damaged and at a loss. So the FTSO allows us as Spark token holders or Songbird holders the ability to use a detachable vote in order to submit price feeds to the network. However, not everybody wants to sit there and submit price feeds every time a new time series or section of time where prices are submitted. Not everybody wants to sit there and submit price feeds all the time, 24 seven. This is where signal providers come in. We can delegate our votes to those signal providers. They submit price feeds, earn rewards, and distribute a portion of those rewards back to those who delegated. This is decentralized as it allows the token holders the ability to select different signal providers to all compete for submitting price data. So instead of having one centralized party submitting all the price data or all the off-chain data to the Flare network or Songbird network, we have a decentralized or multiple signal provider way to submit off-chain data. If you're getting anything out of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like and subscribe button and left me a comment in the comment section below. So we already discussed what an Oracle is how Flare gets its price data and off-chain data using the Flare Time Series Oracle, how we as Spark and Songbird holders earn rewards by delegating our votes to signal providers in order to earn those rewards for submitting accurate price data. The cool thing about this is by delegating a detachable vote, we can not only earn rewards by submitting price data to the FTSO, we can utilize that token in another application or for staking for the F or S asset system. So since we can earn rewards by delegating our votes to signal providers, what factors do we need to take into consideration in order to earn the most rewards and select the best signal providers? Here we are on the flaremetrics.io website. As you can see, this has been our go-to for many videos now. On the bottom left-hand corner, we see the FTSO provider list. 
we can go ahead and click view all. This gives us a list of all the active Flare time series Oracle signal providers. Now just running through briefly on this FTSO list, at the top you can see this overall little slider. This overall little slider switches between the current epoch and overall. This means we can see stats from all the epochs or adjust the current one. So if I click the button here, see how it switches to epoch four? It gives us data for just epoch four and then switching back we're going back to overall. So on this list, we can use the vote power, vote power percentage, reward rate, or region to categorize or filter how we see these STSOs or FDSOs. Clicking on the reward rate, we can see it's now filtered with the highest returning signal provider at the top and going down in order. Similarly with vote power, we do that, and we can see from the highest vote power to the lowest, or from the lowest vote power to the highest. First, I wanna to touch on bad actors. The entire FTSO system is designed in order to reward good signal providers and punish or get rid of poor signal providers. If signal providers are providing incorrect price data, they won't get rewards or they'll get lower rewards. And then we as delegators would then delegate our votes elsewhere. So what do we need to take into consideration when deciding which signal providers to delegate to? The first one I wanna to touch on is the vote power. You can see right now the overall vote power for AFTSO is at 11.5%. If we switch to Epoch 4, it's sitting at 9.94%. A signal provider's vote power will be capped at 10%. The system is set up so that way not any one signal provider can take over the network and become a centralized oracle. That means that if AFTSO, for example, jumped up to have a vote power of 20% for the next week, they would only be able to claim half of the rewards that they'd essentially be eligible for. So if a signal provider has over 10%, the rewards they get will be scaled back to that 10% mark. So essentially, if there's over that 10%, the amount of votes that they can use is less than what they've been delegated. This means they're getting less rewards per delegated vote, meaning that each of us, if we're delegated to a signal provider over 10%, will ultimately get less rewards because they're being distributed to more people or more participants or more delegators. Another thing to consider is the rewards rate. After all, that's what we're here for, rewards, as well as participating in a great network. So looking at the rewards rate, you can see that the top AFTSO has a rewards rate for Epoch 4 of 0.905. If we click this toggle to go to overall, it looks like our rewards rate is sitting at about 2.293. Why is it higher overall than for Epoch 4? Well, going back to Epoch 4, Epoch 4 started this past Saturday and is going until this next Saturday. Since the signal providers earn rewards based on their performance, if they do better or worse, then they're gonna get more rewards or less rewards. It's not a fixed APY or fixed percentage of rewards that they're guaranteed. So if they do very well, then for this next epoch, they'll earn more rewards. If they do less than well, they will earn less rewards. So this rewards rate shows us how many rewards that signal provider is collecting per 100 wrapped songbird since the start of the epoch. Again, if we toggle back to overall, then that rewards rate shows us overall how many rewards been earned throughout each epoch per 100 wrapped songbird. The rewards rate shown on Flare Metrics takes into consideration the fee, meaning the fee is already calculated in this rewards rate. So the rewards rate that's shown here is the actual rewards rate that we will receive per 100 Songbird tokens delegated. The next thing we need to consider is the fees. As you can see, most of these signal providers have set their fee at about 20%. It's my hope that eventually, in order to become more competitive, these fees will start to drop. Over the long term, the less fee the signal provider takes, the more rewards that we get. You can already see scrolling down that DeFi Oracles, they have a fee of 15% and Sundara has a fee of 2%. However, you can also see that their rewards rate are less than, say, scrolling back up to the top and 
we look at Scandi nodes. So even though their fees are lower, the reward rates may not match the fee. However, again, if we want to pressure these other signal providers to drop their fee, we may want to consider delegating to a lower fee signal provider. Now, I'm not saying delegate all your tokens to a lower signal provider. I'm not telling you to delegate or do anything with your tokens. I'm just saying that in the long run, we might be able to pressure these signal providers to lower their fees by maybe delegating some here or there to the lower fee signal providers. The last thing I wanna to touch on is delegating to different signal providers and the benefits that might come along with that in addition to the rewards. Probably the best known one is the best FTSO. They initially started by sending out NFTs and making them claimable to people that delegated their votes or their Songbird votes to the best FTSO. If we look at the top, we can click NFTs and we can see that for the best NFT Quest 01 NFT, if you had wrapped and delegated 1000 Songbird or more during Epoch 2, they were handing out or giving out this NFT. So we need to consider extra incentives such as NFTs or whatever may come in the future when deciding which signal provider to delegate to. Now, if we look at their actual delegate section, we can see that they have something called NFT club points. These NFT points can be earned when delegating Songbird to work up towards an NFT. Again, this is just an example of an extra incentive that we may have for delegating with different signal providers. So essentially we need to take all these factors into consideration when deciding which signal provider we want to select. Obviously rewards are up there on the list of what we want to get out of our signal providers. However, fee schedule, added incentives, and vote power all play into the thought process on how we are delegating and to whom we're delegating. So that about wraps it up for this video. Again, I just wanted to go over the FTSO signal providers and some factors that we should be considering when trying to select. As always, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. We'll catch you next time on DeFi Tactics. The vote power, vote power percentage, reward weight, blah, blah. Similarly with, the last thing I wanna to touch on is potential extra benefits from delling. So that about wraps it up for this video. Again, I just wanted to give you some factors as to what we, blah, blah.